Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. I got started riding with friends probably 40 years ago and they all had Morgans of the old, uh, old style and so I was rather impressed the way they uh, handled themselves, the way they traveled through the mountains. So I, I started, uh, I got my first stallion 21 years ago from a breeder over in Montana. And uh, we've accumulated several registered mares in the process. So I bred up a, a type of Morgan that's uh, good for me. Good, good in the mountains, gentle with people, intelligent, good feet, and uh, uh, very impressed with the way they take care of the people. They'll go in any direction you want to point them. If you are, um, there's one, one breeder there that had uh, 400 head of cows and 100 head of horses, and he had three horses in cutting competition at all times. So yeah, if you want to go outside of the dude string, you can make a Morgan horse do anything you want. Drive, ride, pack, whatever you'd like them to do. They'll do it and do it well. Um, some of the endurance horses, they'll breed uh, Arab Morgans, and you get an excellent endurance horse, something that's tough and smart, too. Um, they, uh, my pack animals in the pack business are perch and cross Morgan horses. Uh, big, stout, and uh, calm, calm, level-headed horses where if I get in a bind with a, a string of six or eight, I, I don't expect a big blow up. I don't expect to run away or anything. They're usually very calm at what they do. Um, and the perch and cross is a very good cross for me too because then I've got something heavy enough. If I want to drive in the winter, I can. On a sleigh, um, either doing parades or anything like that, I can still do that with them. Of course, you get the, you know, the government breeding from the breeders back east and they bred them a lot for uh, military. Uh, the cavalry horses were all had some Morgan in them or a little of it. And uh, that direction, they had something that was going to go all day long and stout enough to pack the big ones or uh, pull pull the wagons too. Right. Yeah. Um, when when we get do when we get people that want to take a trail ride or an overnight trip, we run them into this corral saddle them and then fit the people to the saddle so that we don't get to a trailhead back here in the back country and have the wrong saddle. Right. And then we're good to go too when we hit the trail running up there. Sure. You almost said a group of dudes, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're going to offend somebody somehow, some way. Sure. <laughs> Guests yeah. or clients, but, what we need to do. But you know do. what? There are people out there that like to be offended. They yeah. enjoy it. They look forward to it. <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> So most this this whole string goes back to the Wyoming flyhawk, and, and he was a he was bred in Vermont or Virginia maybe, and then come out to a sheep farm in Wyoming, and then it, this is all some of his bloodlines. Of course, that was in the early 1900s when he was there. So uh, through down through the stallions in the bloodline, this is what I get. Um, There's, uh, yeah, Wyoming Flyhawk was a favorite of a breeder out north here, and she she swore by that breed and crossed with anything and uh, well-traveled, good feet, and uh, intelligent mind. You can tell. I mean, just looking at their heads, you can tell. Maybe everybody but this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. I rode all summer long, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these are... These are outstanding uh, guide horses here. Maybe we put uh, uh, dudes or novice people on these, but beginners can take right off and ride these horses and feel safe. 
And I feel safe putting them on these type of horses too. The horse takes care of them. Yes. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. I used this horse, I used this horse as a stud horse, a stallion for maybe three years, and a lot of these are his colts. And that's kind of my breeding program, like this little fellow. So I, I breed my own stallions. I kept them for... Uh, uh, two years until they get nasty or I just get tired of putting up with them and then I'll castrate them, put them in the dude string and go on from there. And uh, like this little colt over here is a, oh, yeah. a stud prostate. Okay. Yeah. Um, we still have some rides going out this week with dudes or uh, novice people. So I got them here until I can... Uh, absolutely be done with the outfitting and then I'll put them out on pasture. More pasture. You got hurt recently? Yes, I did. I come off of one horse and broke some ribs up and stuff. So that's got to have uh, laid you up then for this season? All right? summer. Yeah, yeah. It happened on July the 11th and I have yet barely been able to ride. That had to be hard. It was tough. Yeah. It was tough on me and tough on my wife because she, she had to take over. five pack trips to do. Which, we say t uh, pack trips, it just means a lot of fun to some people. But there's a, a lot of work that goes into it. You're taking care of, we, we won't go out in the woods with less than 22 head of horses. And she was taking care of 22 head of horses out there in the back country. There's no krells, there's no nothing but just hobble and set them loose. Right. So these people that are going out into the back country for overnight trips, they're going out for a variety of different reasons? Are they hunting? Are they just looking at the countryside? No hunting. They are all, all scenic trips. Okay. And they've uh, contacted us through our website. We've given them a good description of what they'll be doing and what they want to see. A lot of people want to come and see the Teton Range. Of course, the Grand Teton is a pretty famous place, and we travel right through the heart of it. So, and they like the camping experience being, I like to uh, put my trips out there as this is the way it used to do it. This is how people got through the country. This is how people arrived at one place was to get on a pack string or a pack horse and go explore and look. And this is some of the things you're going to do to get there. So I've, I've made it kind of a life goal just to keep it basic, keep it simple so people realize what their ancestors did to get out west. You're, you're, you're imprinting on the people. So yeah. You're yeah. trying to tell a story. Yep. And your experience. Yep. And they, some people can do it and some people can't. They, we have returned people that have come back for more than three years in a row. And we've got people that haven't been able to make a five day trip. We bring them out early and send them yeah. on their way. OK. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't for everybody back then either. No, that's how our cities became. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to stay back and take care of the storefront. <laughs> that there's a lot of things to take care of on one of these trips. Yes. You got you got the stock, you got the horses, uh -huh. you got the supplies, all that. You got the customers, yeah. which is its own yeah. world of issue. I had a brother who was a horseshoer, and he always said that it was never the it was never work working with the horses. It was always work working <laughs> exactly. with the people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to. And then you got 
the wildlife in the countryside, mm -hmm. all these variables. Yep. The horse of it, you can always, um, you can always know what they're going to do or what they're thinking. But a pe person that comes to you and you don't know them from Adam, uh, it's a different story. You, you, you're, they're, you're getting paid good money to go back there and show them a, a time of their life. And disappointed or not, you know, you've got to take care of stuff. You got to, you, their safety comes first too. So there's always that, whether they're going to stay on their horse and ride five days or whether they're going to fall off in the first hour and get knocked out or cold right. cogged. But, I mean, you probably get groups where the, the, the family dynamic starts to get uh, oh, weird, yeah. where yeah. you get fights breaking out between <laughs> people's or in-laws or, or whatever. groups that have never met. Either yeah. they'll hit it off and be best of friends yeah. or they're going yeah. to strangle each other. Yeah. Or people have expectations or, of how they're going to react and behave, where they think they're a horseman and they're not. Or, or, or you get into a mountain storm where it's raining at two inches an hour. And, <laughs> and you Rain never... For five days. Yeah. And it's cold and it's wet and they're whining. What? Yeah. <laughs> they spent a lot of money to be uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> but that's one thing we can't control. Right. Mother Nature. Right. But, and over the 40 years we've been in doing it, we've made great friends. And if they're not our friends, they just don't call us back. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah, we've had a lot of return uh, uh, families that over the years that have kept in contact and they love the Morgan horses. We've had one guy this summer that just ranted and raved over the horses. He thought they were the best stock ever. And he was a Morgan man from back in upper state New York. And so he'll be back. He'll be back to see more of these, these horses. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, Check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Yeah. They shouldn't be able to just buy stuff. Yeah. And our horses, if we were to sell one, we really want them to be used in the same format that they're used here, right? Like I did sell a mare just recently who I've rode for 14 years, and I sold her to a gal that'll ride her here in the Tetons. And yeah. So that's where I wanted that mare to go. Right. So that worked out well. Right, right. Yeah. Don't, we don't sell too many of them, but yeah. So we saw one colt out there. Do you have young stock somewhere else then? Yeah, there's three yearlings that are off at a, a rental pasture that I've got rented. And the, there we got about four four-year-olds that are just coming into their self this year. Okay. They've packed dudes this year. Um, we've guided on them in the past, but they went right into the string this year packing green people. And that's another thing about the Morgan horse. They, they pick up and they go. You don't have to worry about them bucking every year or every spring. You don't have to retrain. That horse that you put out in the fall is the same as you get in the spring really? when you get gathered up. Wow, that's mm -hmm. terrific. Yeah. Because a lot of horses, they'll, they'll, yep. they'll test you. Uh -huh. They don't want to get going again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Especially if they have a good memory of what went down last yeah. year. Right. Yeah. Well, three of them this year that were three-year-olds we started last year, they come right on this spring, and we saddled them, and boom, Kevin was just up on them first thing in the spring, and no buck, no nothing. And so you ride them for a couple of weeks just to make sure you're not going to deal with that, and right. then off they went into the client list, you know. It was good. Good, good horse. Do you get outside mares, uh, people wanting to use your stud? Much no, of that? no, I I don't put don't my stallions out. out there for that. I don't like uh, trying to get a, a mare settled and then not settle and a year later come back and say, I didn't get a colt and I paid you money. So I just don't put myself out that way. I have done and uh, with good success. People have loved the colts but I don't like more than one or two around at a time, yeah. you know, or if that. Right, right. 
Do you pasture breed? Is that how yes. you do it? Uh -huh. Yeah, everything is right out in the open field. I usually have a five or ten acre pasture that I like to just turn the mares and the stallion out with. And as long, and it, these stud colts like this one here will do just fine out there and they won't bully anything or push anything and, and as long as they've got a mare that they can run with. They don't have any of their... That's not... They don't have any of their perch and Oregon crosses here. They're all out on pasture. That, <clears throat> that one there, she's a perch in Morgan Cross, four-year-old, but she got rope burn while she was on the last trip. That's okay. why she's standing alone while we're doctored. This one's a four-year-old right in the string nowadays. This this little filly or this little <laughs> this gilding is out of a black stallion and a black mare and come come <laughs> copper. I have no idea where that come from, but it was lying in wait. That's a that that's a horse of many color there. That's right. It's a pretty color. Mm hmm. My kids started that one last year. Yeah. Okay. Sam's now. One is plenty. Okay. Yeah, one is plenty. Is good. Yeah, they're probably not excited to come in the barn. Probably not good things happen. So. Sometimes a bucket of grain. <laughs> So one of our favorite uh, pastimes is to do long pack trips on our own. And so we have hauled over on the other side of the Teton Range maybe five times total and uh, covered the whole range clear from over there back to this barn. And it's over 150 miles. Wow. This guy right here has been my mount four times out of the five. And he, he'll come home the same as he leaves the trailer over there. Solid as a rock. Nothing bugs him. Nothing bothers him. He takes care of me in every so... Uh, takes care of me in every way. He's, um, he's very alert. Yes. I mean, it's not like he's a sleepy, calm horse. He's no. a... An alert, aware, uh -huh. which watches out for bears, wolves, and coyotes. Right, right. that sleepy <laughs> horse will sometimes see something all of a sudden, and then he yeah. will freak out. Yeah. Whereas this horse will see it coming, maybe. Do he's, a uh, beautiful horse. he's, he's gorgeous. Yeah, he's got just a beautiful head. And it's some, you know. The, is the Circle L your brand? Yes, it is. There's a story there. What's that? This belonged to my great grandfather as a registered brand with the state of Idaho. He kept it all his lifetime, passed it down to my grandpa. My grandpa kept it his whole lifetime, branded livestock with it. And then my dad took it over and didn't pay the renewal one year and lost it. It went away. Okay. So the first five years of my marriage to uh, my previous wife, I tried to get it back and couldn't get it. So I created another brand and used it. And then 21 years ago, Debbie and I got married and decided we'd try to get the Circle Well brand back from the state. So we uh, put it in with five other choices and it come back to us after a, a long elapse. So I, I don't plan on leaving, letting it elapse <laughs> ever again. I suppose the, the, the story of the heritage helped them decide. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Well, I don't think they really knew it, oh, okay. but um, whoever had the Circle L brand in another part of the state let it elapse, so it allowed me to bring it back yeah, yeah. to us. Yeah. You, well, you, you were hurt. You couldn't do your own shoeing. Did you do your own shoeing before that? Um, you have a shoer that, you have a farrier. There's, there's no way I could take care of 45 head on my <laughs> right. own. Right, right, uh, right. Not even as a young man. 
Right. And nowadays uh, we use a, a hired guy that comes here with a hydraulic table, lays them down, and shoes them automatically. Really? Okay. And and he'll do 31 in a day. No kidding. We shoe every six weeks, and the 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 elapsed between the first six and the second six weeks, we're working, we're dry, we're doing dudes, and uh, an ordinary shoer could not have us back out on the trail in a day. This guy comes back in, right. and we don't we don't miss a beat. Yeah, we go out year. we go out after six weeks with a new set of shoes on. Yeah. It's a way of seeing new country when we go by ourselves. We have to uh, conform to a lot of Forest Service rules, being licensed and, and bonded with the state of Idaho. But when you're a private rider on your own, you can go and do as you want. I see. We've been publishing the Draft Horse Wall Calendar for over 40 years. Our customers have come to expect beautiful and interesting photographs of draft horses printed on high quality paper, wire bound so they lay flat on the wall. Large date squares make it easy to jot down appointments or events, and every grid page includes a bonus photo. We've included photos of all the major American draft horse breeds working in the woods and farm fields, as well as performing for appreciative crowds. They cost just $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for just $32. You can get your calendar by calling 1-877-647 2452 or visiting our website at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 1 877 647 2452 or www.ruralheritage.com. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.